Do you have your GCC maths paper 1 exam tomorrow or even today as you're watching this video? Well, I'm going to tell you exactly what I did to get a 9 in maths. There's one really important point that I'm going to mention that can literally take you from a fail to a pass, from a 7 to an 8, an 8 to a 9. I'm going to mention that in this video and I'm also going to give you guys some resources that would genuinely be a lifesaver for this exam. So let's just get straight into it. I just want to also say congrats for getting through the exam so far. I saw you guys saying some good stuff about GCC biology. <laughs> some of the comments were really funny. Now, the first thing I'm going to mention is that this is a paper 1 exam. This is a non-calculator exam, meaning that you're going to have to do some things in your head there's some things that this paper requires from you that the other papers wouldn't really ask for so the main most important thing that always comes up in some sort of way either a really small question or a really hideous three circles question which came up in my exam I know a lot of people had a lot of trauma from this question it's the fact that you need to know your trig ratios because this is a non-calculator exam you have to be able to figure it out yourself and there's a really easy way of doing this you can either use the triangle or you can just go zero one two three four four three two one zero square root everything put it over two i'll show you guys how that looks here just to give you an idea but basically just quickly go over this especially if you've completely forgotten about this because it's so easy to lose marks on but also to gain marks on if you remember it so just have that in mind that's one thing i want to say because it's paper one but also because it's a paper one exam you have to also be very familiar with those really basic things such as being able to do addition on a piece of paper and multiplication especially multiplying decimals because a lot of people have problems with that and it's usually something that you just forget to go over and then it ends up being like the very first question something like 4.2 times 6.9 anything like that it's just something that you can easily forget about and just need to go over really quickly and you'll just instantly remember how to do it again so that's specific to paper one because it's really important to remember that this is a paper one non-calculator exam i'm going to give you something that's also really really important that you need to be doing and that's going over each of the content points one by one from now even if you're very familiar with everything and you know everything and you're like i'm gonna get a nine in this uh, no matter how confident you feel you want to go from the very beginning of of the specification all the way to the end and make sure you know everything. Now the thing is, unlike my biology video where I talked about the specification, the math specification is really bad. <laughs> I don't like it at all. So it's better to find checklists online. I'll leave some down below in the description too, but these are really easy ways to just go through every single topic area and just make sure that you know everything. I know Corbett Maths has a really good sheet of literally every single topic area and each subtopic within each one. And each one I think has a link to a video as well. So in case you have forgotten one, you can watch through some walkthroughs of some questions that will really help you and remembering how to do that so uh, I'll leave it here on the screen but I'll put it in the description as well for you because that is genuinely the most important thing you must do you need to make sure that you know how to do everything within the specification obviously and no matter how cooked you think you are as long as you can work through each one of these and know how to do a question on all of them then you're already in a much better state so that's just something that you really really need to do okay so once you know how to do every question type what next do you do past papers well I personally would say that because it's so late right now you shouldn't sit there and do a full past paper but if there are any past papers that you haven't looked at in a while and there's some questions in there you can look at the difficult questions within them and if there's any past papers you haven't done to just go straight to the end and do those last couple questions because those are the most important ones especially if you don't have time to actually sit down and do a full paper what I would recommend for you to do is especially in like the morning of the exam what I did was I'd watch a video of someone else walking through a past paper and before each question I'd pause it and make sure I know how to do it in my head and then I'd see if they did the same method that I would have done and if so then I can just move on but if it's something that I've never seen before at least I have some practice on it. If you're someone who genuinely thinks they know everything and you just want to make sure you get better at those difficult questions, what I really recommend is some of the videos from GCC Math Tutor. He's got some videos where he goes through the most difficult questions within each area. So for example, the most difficult circle theorem questions, he just goes through all of them and like for each topic he's got this video where you can see the most difficult questions based on that topic and if you're able to do those, genuinely you can do any question within that topic then. So that's like if you're really aiming for that grade 7 to 9, you want to try and look at those most difficult topics and see if you're able to do them but if you just want a pass if you just want to not be cooked then I would recommend just watching full walkthroughs of papers and just making sure you know how to do most of the questions in them and if there's any questions you don't know how to do perfect that's a topic where you can do some more practice in but basically what I really want you to do now is to just do practice questions or to watch other people doing questions and you're doing it with them okay either way I don't want you to sit there and do nothing you have to be doing something for your revision right now either you're looking through that specification you're looking through those checklists and you're making sure you know how to do each question or you're looking at those most difficult questions at the end of every paper and just attempting those or you're watching a video of other people doing it and you're trying to do it in your head as well alongside or you can get a piece of paper out and do it alongside with them as well just to make sure that you know how to do it and also if timing is an issue for you what you can do is if it's a five mark question give yourself five or six minutes to do that question just to make sure that you're on top of things in terms of time management and remember that when you do get into the exam yourself I'm gonna give you guys some in exam tips now so when you're in that exam exam if there's any questions where you're just taking way too long 
obviously skip it, that's what everyone says. But another thing that I really recommend for you guys to do, this is a really underrated exam technique and it's underlining keywords. This is something that you've probably been taught since primary school, but like most people don't really do it anymore. And it's genuinely a really good way of making sure you don't slip up on anything. So you don't write the wrong number, you make any silly mistakes. Because if you underline everything, you're making sure that you've actually read it and you're not skimming through it. Now, another thing that I used to do as well is that if I finish the paper and I still had like a lot of time to spare, what I'd do in that time, I'd start from the back of the paper again and I'd start doing the questions one more time but doing them in a different method so if there's any way I can do the same question in a different way slightly and I still get the same answer at the end then I know for certain that that is a correct answer or at least that there's no silly mistakes within that question. So that is something I also found really useful, especially for math, sometimes I would end up finishing with a lot of time to spare. I remember in my actual exam, I didn't have enough time to do this. I only had enough time to do the most difficult questions, but even those really simple questions, when you're done with the paper, I want you to redo them again if you can, and just make sure that you're getting the same answer either way. So for example, if you're doing a question on trigonometry and you use the sine rule, try and see if you can use the cosine rule as well now to try and get the answer. And if you get the same answer, then you know you've Quite correct basically my main tips are firstly know your trig values okay just really quickly just learn your trig values secondly go over that checklist I'm gonna leave down below in the description so go over each point in the specification make sure you know how to do everything thirdly watch videos and watch past paper walkthroughs those are really gonna help in making sure that you get those difficult questions right in the exam I recommend for you to underline keywords so you don't make silly mistakes but also to redo questions if you have the time just to make sure that you haven't done anything silly and you're making sure that you're getting as many marks as possible the last thing I want to say is that no matter how little you've revised so far, this time period can genuinely help you a lot. I saw a lot of comments, previous videos of people saying, I haven't done anything, I'm cooked. Even if you start now and you start revising now, you can at least get a good bulk of the specification completed that you can get a decent score within the exam. Like this is a really, really good time to change your grades around. So don't think that you can't do anything now. So apart from that, best of luck guys for this exam. You've got this, I believe in you. And I'll see you very, very soon. So bye for now. See you next week, I think.